I want to get your view, first of all, about um, that point I just made. We're obviously hearing a lot about the violence more recently in Kaduna. Obviously, this must be having some impact on banking as a whole. I know you're head of retail banking. Give us a sense of how it's impacting on retail, the retail banking space. Absolutely. It's quite unfortunate uh, what, what has been happening in the north. Um, you know, retail banking relies uh, largely on network and footprint. So have branches all over the place to collect deposits and also lend to the public. What has happened now is that both banks in these uh, locations, Kaduna, um, uh, Zamfara, Yobe, have shut down. And that means activities have ground to a halt and this is affecting the economy. So this uh, is well, something that would obviously impact um, the bottom line of banks uh, when we see those perhaps Q2 numbers coming out sometime next month. Absolutely. It, it will definitely show up. And uh, banks are going to be a lot more cautious the way they do business in those areas. And uh, there's a lot of concern raised about the general economy of the North going forward. So we may see some uh, impact on bank results for the month of June. So that may well show up sometime in July. But what's the way forward? Um, we know that for most banks, um, the strategy is to use um, retail banking as an avenue to get cheap deposits, which you now lend to the bigger corporates. I know banks like Diamond Bank, for instance, are perhaps a little more aggressive about the whole bouquet of um, consumer finance products. But give us a sense of how um, banks can play this, um, this challenge that obviously is something that they're going to have to deal with for some time. Absolutely. The first thing is that peace needs to return to these uh, areas that we have conflicts in. That, that is given. But beyond that, it creates also an opportunity for mobile banking. So what this means is that you don't have to rely on going to the brick and mortar uh, buildings that banks have as uh, branches but you can actually transfer money and make payments using your mobile phone. And I think that uh, with the revolution going on in the mobile money area by the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, maybe the next one year or two, most of those transactions will be happening on the phone. And that reduces the uh, movements of people from one location to the other. So even if you have some sense of crisis, people are actually able to do business and also make purchases from their houses. All right, so but give us an update on this mobile banking initiative. Clearly, the um, CBN is, has been very... Um, aggressive about pushing that forward as a substitute for cash-based banking. But to some extent, there's a view that it's, it's only um, growing at a very slow pace right now. Uh, absolutely. The, the pace is quite low. It's not what we expected to happen in the past. I think that the basic problem the mobile money companies have is the agent network. Um, actually, establishing an agent network is a very big challenge for everybody, even in Latin America. And, because there are conditions these agents have to meet to be appointed. So mm. what happens is that most of these uh, mom and pop shops or drugstores or distribution companies don't really qualify as what we, call, we consider an agent uh, for these mobile money companies. So I think the agent network uh, aggregation has been a problem for the mobile money companies. So that's what is slightly slowing it down. Uh, right now. Okay, but do you see this changing though? Do you see, how do you see them um, so, uh, surmounting this challenge? Uh, well, w what is happening right now is that most of them are also constrained by capital. You know, they don't have enough funds to you know, set up these agents. But there's an initiative from the Central Bank of Nigeria. There's a, uh, an exposure draft already that banks are looking at that CBN had prepared, which allows banks or which will allow banks to directly have agents. Now, so, you know, banks in Nigeria have a lot of capital to, to play with. So if banks are allowed to have agents, it's easier to have this agent network distributed all over Nigeria. And I think by the end of the year, uh, it's possible for CBN to come out with a policy on that. So once banks are allowed to have agents direct, are able to fund it, then you find that the proliferation will increase. So I think that's what may change the game in that area, what CBN is doing with banks, having agents directly. Now talk to us about your experience at um, Diamond Bank. I mean, is this something that you're aggressive about? Well, we, we are actually aggressive about the unbanked and underbanked. And of course, if you are going to go down that uh, area of the pyramid, south of the pyramid, you have to use technology because these are well, relatively large volume but low value uh, uh, customers in terms of uh, what they bring to the table. So what we are trying to do is actually take banking to the underbanked and not bring the underbanked into the banks. And the only way you can take banking to the underbanked is through technology. And we are investing very heavily in this area to be able to take uh, banking to the underbanked and banked. And we are partnering in this respect with Women World Banking and EFINA, you know, right. to be able to deliver this. I mean, I was, you talk about technology, and I was speaking to someone yesterday about um, the challenges that, um, should I say, are constraining the impact of 
the, this cashless um, banking initiative. And they, they point to the GSM networks and the instability of those networks. Clearly, there have been quite a number of service issues which are well documented in Nigeria with regards to how the GSM companies are performing. But uh, the, what I'm hearing now is that this is also impacting on the, on the effectiveness of the cashless um, Lagos pilot project. Absolutely. But I, I just think there is some level of apathy there. It's typical of what happens in Nigeria when such policies come up. Uh, regardless of what people may believe or think, I think is that if the CBN sticks uh, to its uh, uh, ground, by the end of the year, as we approach January 1st, when we roll out to the rest of the country, Lagos will have cut off. So people are bound to complain. This, uh, Nigeria is a largely cash-driven economy. And once you begin to constrain that, there's no way you won't come up with a lot of complaints and excuses. We think it's a good policy, and I think we should stick to it. There will be challenges, definitely. Everybody will expect that, given that there are infrastructure issues in Nigeria. Everybody knows that. But even when the telcos came to Nigeria, there were also infrastructure issues. But they were able to overcome that over time, despite that. So everybody's making calls today, despite power outage and all that. So we think that if we stick to our guns and stay with the strategy, we'll win all as right, a country. Hopefully, I hope we win. Um, thank you so much, Jude, for joining us. Head of Retail Banking at Diamond Bank, um, reaching us, giving us his thoughts on the impact of violence in the north on the banking sector and, of course, the mobile banking sector in Nigeria.